What's up guys, today I want to show you how to change your guitar strings in a way that is relatively easy to do, repeatable, and is going to make tuning really solid and stable in the long run. So we're going to jump right in. The first thing you need to do is make sure you actually have a fresh set of strings. Don't start taking your old strings off until you have confirmed, yeah, I do have another pack of strings. This has happened to me before where I thought I had a pack sitting in my case and I really didn't. So make sure you actually have the strings. Okay, so we're going to start by just loosening all of the strings up. You don't have to do this one string at a time. If you have a string winder, go ahead and use that. If you don't have one, you should probably get one. It's a really useful piece of kit that only costs a couple of bucks and it will save you so much time and frustration in the long run. Once all the strings are loosened, go ahead and take a pair of wire cutters. Here I'm using some needle nose pliers with a built-in wire cutter and cut the strings off. I like to do this between the tuners and the nut in that little bit of space that's there. Then you can set the longer side of the string off to the side, leave it hooked up to the guitar right now. We'll get to that in a second. Take the pliers and use them to unwrap the string around each of the peg heads and pull them out through the holes. Sometimes these can be a little bit sharp and you can poke yourself and it's, it's not super fun. So having a pair of pliers to just grab a hold of a short piece of wire that's got bad intentions is a lot easier than trying to take the whole string off with just your bare fingers. So once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and go down to the bridge and we're gonna push the strings into the guitar and then pull the bridge pins out and then pull the strings out. Now sometimes the pins don't fit very well and they kind of get swedged. So the easiest way to deal with this is not to try and use the little notch built into your string winder and pop them up because you're either gonna damage your guitar, break the string winder or both, but rather since all your strings are gonna be loose and out of the way, reach your hand through the sound hole and either use your finger or if they're really stuck, you can actually use the flat side of your string winder to push against those bridge pins that are sticking to the top. This is the easiest way to pop those stubborn bridge pins out of your guitar without hurting yourself, your tools, or damaging your guitar. Once you got the strings all off, go ahead and wipe the guitar down with a clean, soft rag. If you have some polish, go ahead and use it. This makes getting to those hard to reach areas so much easier. So I like to give my guitar a thorough clean on the top and on the headstock every time I change the strings. If you're wondering about what kind of polish to use, just make sure that it doesn't have silicone in it. I recommend using the Stuart McDonald brand preservation polish. It has no silicone and it's super high quality stuff. It doesn't smell like fruity or weird. Sometimes guitar polishes will have these weird scents in it. And like, I, it's a cleaning product for super high quality wood finishes. I don't need like funky, foofy. I, I don't want that. All I want is the necessary ingredients to clean my guitar and protect the finish. Some of you are going to be wondering why do I keep mentioning don't use something with silicone in it? Because silicone is extremely slippery and if you use a cleaning compound that has silicone in it, you're more more likely to get a buildup of silicone on the guitar. If you ever have to take it into a repair shop because something got broken or cracked, glue will not adhere to that silicone and your guitar tech is going to have a really hard time cleaning all of that off in order to get an adhesive to actually stick to your guitar. So just a little pro tip, silicone, so no, no, don't, don't go for it. Okay, once that's done, go ahead and get your string package open, then carefully take your strings out one at a time, and I like to start on the bass side. First thing you're gonna do is bend the string just a little bit up from the ball end, and this will help it to go down into the guitar at an angle, out of the way of the bridge pin, so that it will come down like this, and then the ball end will swedge against the side of the pin and that hole in the, in the top. That's how they seal in. The bridge pins don't grab the ball and hold it down. They just fill in the hole, and the ball comes over and swedges against it because that bridge pin is filling the hole through the top of the guitar. So if you put this little bend in it, just makes life a little bit easier so you don't get a ball end that's hooked on the bottom edge of your bridge pin. Once you get the string inserted into the guitar and the bridge pin after it, obviously lining up the groove with the string, pull the string tight while you push down on the bridge pin to swedge it into place. Now this next bit is gonna take a little bit of practice and it's somewhat particular depending upon the strings that you're using and the actual guitar that you're changing the strings on. You wanna take the end of the string and insert it through the correct tuner and then start tightening. But before you tighten, you need to make sure that you have the correct amount of slack. If you don't have enough slack in your string, you won't be able to wrap sufficiently around the shaft of the tuner and you'll end up with string slippage and maybe even the string popping off your guitar. So this is going to take a little bit of experimentation, but it's better to have a little bit more slack than you need than less slack because if you have more slack than you need, you can stop tightening the string and pull it through with a pair of pliers. 
Once you get the string inserted through the peg head and you guesstimate how much slack you're actually gonna need, then you can take your string winder and start tightening. Once the string sort of breaks around the hole in the shaft of the tuner, you wanna start keeping it tight. If you start pulling on the string before then, it's obviously just gonna pull straight out of the tuner. So once it gets past that sort of critical breaking point where it's got enough grip to hold on, you wanna hold onto that string tight so that it wraps around evenly on that tuner shaft. You're doing this so that you can control whether the string will overlap itself or not. And if you can't guess already, overlapping is a big no-no. This will cause your string to slip and catch and pop in tuning down the road. So you wanna make sure that it wraps evenly on itself down towards the headstock. The more even the wrap is, the better tuning stability you will have down the road. And also, if you get three, four revolutions around that shaft, your string is gonna be really close to the headstock of your guitar, which gives you an even better break angle over the nut. In other words, it puts more downward pressure on the nut, locking your string into the slot on the nut so that it's less likely to get popped out. On some guitars, this is not a very big issue, but on some guitars, it's, it's a huge deal. So a little bit of care here will really help. Now, it is a little bit of a pain in the butt to hold onto the guitar while you're spinning your string winder and keeping tension on the string. Like, how do you hold the guitar? This is where a good guitar stand comes in super handy. The old fashioned style of stand where the guitar sits and leans back, those will work fine, but the best kind are what you call the V yoke, where it actually grabs the headstock and then the guitar sits down at the base because it really locks the headstock into place, which is where all of this you know, spinning and pulling is going on. Like I said earlier, if you end up having more slack than you needed, simply back off with the string winder, grab a hold of the end of the string with a pair of pliers or your hand if you're you know, Hulk strong, whatever, and pull it through the hole in the tuner until you've gotten rid of enough slack to where you think you're gonna get the right wrap around your string. Now, this is important to say, you don't have to be this careful. You don't have to be over the top like I am about making sure that the string never overlaps itself. But if you do, you will have the best tuning stability possible for your guitar. Some guitars just have great tuning stability, the way that they're built and the quality of the machine heads that they're using are just top notch. And so they just want to stay in tune. Other guitars, not so much. And so if you're using more of a budget instrument and you struggle with getting your guitar in tune or keeping it in tune, making sure that you don't allow your string to overlap is, is pretty important. Okay, so once you've gotten your string on, you can go ahead and cut off the excess, but leave, you know, I don't know, like a quarter inch or something, eighth of an inch, I, I'm, I've been out of construction so long, I, I can't look at things and tell you how big they are anymore. I'm, I'm sorry, guys, that, this much. However much you're seeing in the B-roll, cut it off that much, and then take half of it and bend it back towards itself. The reason we do this is that if you just cut it as close as you can, you'll always have this sharp little knob that's gonna wanna catch on a cleaning cloth or your fingers and cut you. But if you bend it back, that sharp little point is pointed towards the inside of the tuner. So it's less likely to catch on something and less likely to cut you. If you wanna be really crazy, you can take the string and bend it back and forth really rapidly until it snaps off. But there is a danger with your first string and second string. Because they're not wrapped, it can potentially break inside of the tuner and then totally unwind and come off of your guitar. So that's sometimes how I like to do it, but you gotta be really careful. If you ruin a set of strings, don't come blaming me. I'm recommending cut it long and bend it back. That's, that's a foolproof way to to do it so okay so do that with your remaining strings and you're done there's not really that much to it changing your strings is one of those things that is really stressful the first time that you do it but after you've got a little bit of practice it's not that hard it makes it a lot more doable to try out different kinds of strings when you know you can just change them at home in about 20 minutes the first time you do this is probably going to take you an hour but after about a year of changing your strings every three months you're going to get pretty good at it and it's not going to be that hard a quick note before i go i said this in the video but i can't stress this enough there's not an exact measurement for how much slack to leave in your strings when you're starting that initial wind. Every guitar is different. Every guitar is different because every string length is a little bit different. Companies are not the same. So I sometimes get it wrong on guitars that I've had for a long time. And you know what? It's okay. It's okay. This is not about being OCD. This is about just doing a good job so that we have good tuning stability. I don't really care if it's super even, if I've got three wraps around one and 10 wraps around another, I don't really care. As long as I've got two or more revolutions around that peg head shaft, I'm good. I'm good. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I know this doesn't directly apply to classical guitars, but maybe we'll do a separate video for that in the future. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you wanna see more content, comment down below. Guys, the four pillars of the YouTube algorithm is like, comment, subscribe, and share, and those things make my videos visible to everybody else. Remember, likes are free. Doesn't cost you anything to hit the like button. If you actually enjoyed the video, 
go ahead and smack that button. My name is Luke Walstead, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Dude.